Welcome to the Health and Wellness webinar and welcome to Algonquin College. We're so pleased that you're taking the right steps to get started on the path to success at Algonquin. My name is Michelle Heavey and I coordinate orientation and social events at Algonquin College. In addition to these service webinars, we have a lot of resources available to get you ready for the fall semester. So please continue to check your email and check the algonquincollege.com slash orientation website for updates. I am pleased to introduce our first presenter, Tamara O'Connor, who will be sharing everything you need, need to know about Algonquin College's Health Services Department. Tamara? Hey, Michelle. Yeah, thank you so much. So my name is Tamara O'Connor, and I'm the Health Promotion Educator at the Health Services. And so the Health Services is a clinic at Algonquin College that's for you uh, that you can access. We're located in room C141, so that's just the first floor of the C building, and our hours are from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. So we offer everything that a, a regular clinic might offer. We have fully functioning clinic with doctors and nurses. So we offer medical care, prescriptions, blood tests, pap tests, STI testing, and all of this is done in site. So all the testing as well as results are received in site. Um, so it can be nice and efficient. Um, and we've also got immunizations. So these will come in handy more so when it comes to program placements. Uh, so if you have any program placements, you will most likely be using our services. There's also birth control information, emergency, emergency contraceptives, and mental health support. So the mental health support, we have a mental health nurse, as well as a telemedicine psychiatry clinic, um, and that's through referral. Uh, it's in support with the Royal Ottawa. We've also got smoking cessation support. Um, and these are all free services that you can access. Just some important information for accessing the health services. At this time, all visits to the health services must be pre-booked by telephone. Uh, so we're not really accepting any walk-ins right now. And when you do call, be sure to have both your provincial health card and your student AC card. So you want either your OHIP or if you are an international student, you would be using GuardMe. For our online supports, uh, we've got some really great supports online at this time. Uh, one of our main um, websites is the health services website, uh, and you can get a lot of information on that uh, site. We've also got video or phone calls at this time with physician and nurses, so we're offering that virtually, um, especially if there's no physical examination required. And uh, we also have our telemedicine psychiatry clinic, uh, which was mentioned earlier, and that's for mental health support. As for health promotion, we've got some different events and initiatives uh, to also support your um, health. So for example, we have lunchtime yoga, which we would do bi-weekly, and we've got some initiatives initiatives on nutrition and sleep. Um, so these are uh, events online that you can access. Um, one of them is talking about nutrition, cooking, and cultures. And then the other one, Steep and Sleep, is visualizations, um, kind of meditative, as well as talking about sleep um, and tips on that. We've also got little one-minute videos on health and wellness, so quick things that you can access um, that help you with uh, your health and give you some tips on that. So health promotion is a team within the health services, and we seek to support students within different pillars of health, including sleep, safer substance use, mental health and wellness, sexual health and violence prevention, fitness and nutrition, as well as general health. And just to finish off with a couple tips um, on health. Uh, for sleep, uh, developing a relaxing bedtime routine away from screens can really help you uh, and help your body kind of realize, hey, it's actually time for sleep right now, and then get you in that mood. For mental health, counseling services is a really great um, resource. So their website has a ton of information, um, either online services as well as um, other appointments that you can have. For fitness, uh, setting small goals into routine and really doing what you enjoy. So sometimes if you set uh, those goals into a routine, it can help you uh, kind of keep you accountable to continue doing it. For nutrition, consult food labels and Canada's food guide, as well as there's a really good resource for sexual health. Uh, the Sex It Smart provides free condoms to your door, so you can use those at any time. 
And so we would love for you to connect with us uh, either by phone if you want to make an appointment or we have our email here to uh, either share health promotion ideas or feedback as well. And then we've got the social media handles here. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And we're really looking forward to helping you and connecting with you on your Algonquin journey. Thank you, Tamara. Next up, we have Bridget from our counseling department. Hi, my name is Bridget Curran. I'm a counselor at Counseling Services at Algonquin College. I'm also an alumni of the Child and Youth Care Program at Algonquin. So Counseling Services provides confidential counseling by qualified practitioners at no cost to Algonquin students. Students often come seeking support around significant life, life events, stress management, relationship issues, mood and anxiety concerns, as well as academic concerns such as study skills. Career counseling is also offered and involves um, helping students to understand and supporting them in their journey as they are charting out their career path, career assessments, and we also have tools that are used um, to help facilitate this as well, uh, such as career assessment tools. So we have what's called a Pathways to Care model, which really just means that it actually allows students to gain access to services more quickly and ensures services are offered at the intensity and the, individual level, the individual's level and need of, of the student. So needs can be met by um, attending workshops, engaging in therapy-assisted online self-help, um, we also have um, we also have a number of group counseling um, uh, options as well as individual counseling sessions. Finally, we will sometimes refer to the community, and community can both be external from Algonquin as well as internal um, within the Algonquin services. It's important to note you'll see just at the top there that we have uh, walk-in listed. So pre-COVID walk-in is what we had done. Now we're calling it uh, same day and it's offered same day counseling that's offered virtually. So to access counseling services at this time, you can access it by contacting the Welcome Center and uh, you can call the Welcome Center or you can email the Welcome Center to schedule an appointment. So a Appointments are and, and counseling sessions are being done by phone or by video and they're scheduled during the day between nine and four with the last appointment, uh, the last appointment finishing at five o'clock. You can also contact us using a chat function which can be found at the bottom right hand side of our counseling services website and this chat function is meant to provide information and referrals. Um, we're not using it currently as a crisis support um, function. So as a counseling team, we're not able to provide 24 seven crisis support, which is why we have listed community supports that can attend to emergency situations. I would like to highlight the good to talk uh, line, which provides, which is specific to providing support to post-secondary students. It has the option of providing confidential tech support as well as 24 seven crisis counseling. I'd like to take some time to talk about Zoom fatigue. So during the, the age of COVID, um, this might be something that you've heard that's come up before as we are all trying to connect more virtually. So Zoom fatigue is something that tends to happen and, and, and there's many definitions for it, but we, we are experiencing it when we're feeling physically and emotionally worn out from being on all the time. And so why does Zoom fatigue happen? So it can happen when we're becoming, when it's, it's actually really easy when we're on screens all the time or when we're in a Zoom call to be, to become hyper-focused on what we are doing. So um, we might become hyper-focused when we're seeing our image displayed um, and knowing that it's actually visible to other people as well. This can lead people to feel self-conscious at times. And some people uh, describe actually feeling like they're performing, which leads them to focus and monitor their behavior even more. Also, our brains are working extra hard to pay attention to our teachers and to other students who are on that Zoom call with us. And in sometimes uh, in Zoom meetings in particular, you'll notice that um, it's oftentimes that we're having to, we're not able to display or convey the same degree of nonverbals as we were in person. 
this means that we're also having to focus and pay extra attention to other people's nonverbals to try to pick up on what they're saying. There's also a number of distractions that may contribute to Zoom fatigue. So some of these include audio and vi video issues. So internet fatigue is a common one where you're seeing uh, people's facial expressions mid-sentence freezing. Um, we're also, that's, this also comes up just as a distraction when we're noticing that um, you know, people are not muting uh, their audio when other people are talking. So other distractions might occur when we are becoming focused on novel things that pop up in people's backgrounds. So seeing a cute dog walk, on the, walk in the room at somebody's background might be a distraction for us when we're seeing multiple people on that Zoom call as well. Text, app notifications, and the desire to multitask can also contribute to Zoom fatigue when our video is off. Finally, using a smaller device like a phone can be an additional thing that can, can be more tiring. So what to do about it? So how, how can you actually go about minimizing some of these distractions? So I know for a lot of us, um, when we're at home, we're sharing space with other people. And uh, it can be important to and can be helpful to have a conversation around respecting privacy. Some people have actually uh, just put a sticky note up on their door to let people know that um, they can't be disturbed. Obviously, this is really difficult to do in close quarters, particularly when you have young kids. And there's only so many things you can prevent. Um, and sometimes interruptions are just going to happen and are going to be outside of our control. Although it can be tempting when our video is off um, to multitask, one way to actually reduce Zoom fatigue is that to actually try to, to just kind of be on that Zoom call, write notes as, as if, if you need to. Um, so maybe silence your phone. Another uh, tip would be to just put it away or turn off your apps. Using the biggest screen possible is something else that can help with Zoom fatigue. So connecting, to, connecting your laptop to a monitor, even a TV just to serve as a larger screen. Working in a clean, clutter-free environment can reduce distraction. And finally, uh, eye strain can be reduced if you're trying to actually make sure that you're, the screen that you're using and the lighting in your room is not contrasting. So I actually oftentimes am pulling my blinds uh, if I, I'm sitting in front of a window currently and I'm pulling my blinds in front of my monitor as a way to reduce the contrast, but I also am getting some natural light as well. So something to keep in mind while you're on a Zoom call as well is just being able to take some time to move your body. So making small adjustments while you're seated, doing progressive muscle relaxation is something that can be really helpful as well. Um, one option, if, it, if it's available, it's, it's, and if your teachers and participants are okay with it, would be to use audio, audio only and turning your video off or alternating between video on, video off. Another thing that can be really helpful to do is actually just taking a moment, 20 seconds, looking away and then coming back to the screen. And that's something that actually mimics real life. We're not spending, uh, you know, 20 seconds at a time or 20 minutes at a time staring into people's eyes. So I think trying to mimic real life by taking your eyes off the screen momentarily can be really helpful. Taking a break, going for walks, uh, doing some small stretching and deep breathing can also be helpful. And there is this, this option to filter your screen. So to change your view from gallery to single and back again as needed can also be something that can help to reduce fatigue. Again, one other tip would be um, if you actually click on your image, you can hide the image. Uh, you can actually press hide your image. And so this is something some people find helpful if they're feeling self-conscious, um, being visible and seeing their image all the time. So after a Zoom filled day, it can be both physically and mentally draining. In the age of COVID, sometimes it can feel like an endless Monday with days jumbled together, particularly when we're on technology 24 seven. It can be helpful to block time off in your day to take a break from the screen, engage in activities that allow you to move and connect with people by either giving them a call or meeting them uh, for some type of social distancing hangout. So if you're wanting to learn more about counseling services or you're interested in, in booking an appointment or just wanting to explore our resources, you can check out our webpage. There's lots of information on it. 
Thank you for taking the time to listen. And again, if you'd like to schedule an appointment with us, please contact or email the Welcome Center. We can't underestimate the cognitive and emotional load of everything that is happening in this world. Adaptation to new things always takes time. If this is your first experience doing online courses, go easy on yourself as you settle into the new rhythm of learning remotely. Best of luck in your studies and please reach out if you need support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bridget. Next up, we have Sarah Crawford, who is Algonquin College's Sexual Violence Prevention and Harm Reduction Coordinator. Thanks, Michelle. I am Sarah Crawford, and I'm here today to talk to you about Project Lighthouse and the Umbrella Project. So Project Lighthouse is our on-campus service. You will see this lighthouse on uh, many events and posters. And basically what Project Lighthouse does is it uh, shines a light on the topic of sexual violence and helps students navigate healthy relationships. Uh, we use compassion, education, and awareness initiatives to try and reduce sexual violence on campus and provide support to anyone who's experienced sexual violence. So we do lots of different things on social media. Um, you will see weekly we have different events, um, but we also have some different social posters um, and campaigns. And this one is um, a guide to if people are ready to hook up. So it's called Thinking About Hooking Up and there's all the steps that people can go to and the questions that we should ask ourselves before we're hooking up with folks um, to make sure that everyone is experiencing um, great sex. And so that's part of our mission is to make sure that both people are into it and um, people are, are not wasted and that people have talked about what they're into. And so we really are trying to encourage our students to um, have great hookups. And in order to do that, um, it's through getting consent. And so a lot of the work that we do on campus is around, uh, around that piece. Um, so these are some of the things that we are going to be having in September for folks. So um, we're gonna be having the Just Got Weird campaign. So it's all about, um, different bystander interventions. So if you saw something, would you think it was weird or not? Um, this is going to be a social media initiative. Um, so if you look on our Instagram, you'll be able to like slide uh, different things and say if you think things are weird or not. Um, we are going to have some uh, events. So one of them is called Hot Drinks and Hot Topics. Um, and so it's a sex after dark edition. So basically at nights we are going to be um, having conversations about great and healthy relationships, sex, consent, dating, um, and people come and ask basically any questions they've ever wanted to know about sex. Um, we've done this a few times and, and folks are getting Starbucks gift cards for attending. So we will be doing that again. Um, and so if you can just check the, the hub calendar, you'll be able to see the events of that. Um, so that's a great way for people to come and, and ask any questions they've ever wanted to know. Uh, and we will answer them in an open and honest way without any judgment. Um, so we also have uh, a movie night in partnership with um, the other post-secondary campuses, so Carleton and Ottawa U and La Cité. Uh, so we'll be watching a movie night together um, and then we'll be doing some individual um, some individual movies as well um, without the other schools on uh, Netflix and chat. So not your regular Netflix and chill uh, sessions. These are going to be Netflix and having conversations. So, um, so that's something to look out for too. We'll be watching uh, sh movies or shows together and then uh, having conversations about what that looks like and, and uh, getting some, some good honest chats out of that. Uh, one of the other things we're doing is, is we're sending home craft kits to folks. So um, we did one during the summer and it went, quite well and so we're going to be doing that again so people can sign up for our glitter and gra gab crafting courses and we will mail home the um, crafting kits to each person's house and uh, then they'll be able to sign up for the, the weekly course and do the craft sessions uh, we also have i believe you day so all the post-secondary schools um, in Ontario participate in I Believe You Day. It's all about believing survivors of sexual violence. So um, saying things like, you know, if people have experienced sexual violence, like I believe you and how can I help you? Um, and so there's just some great tools and tips around that day. And it's all about um, increasing awareness of uh, people who've been sexually assaulted and, and how to help them best. 
Uh, we also have each week our Ask an Expert series on Facebook Live. Um, so that one is uh, different topics each week. Uh, we're happy if people want to suggest topics for us. Uh, they can send an email to projectlighthouse at algonquincollege.com um, and suggest some topics or if they have any questions about something we're going to be talking about. Each week they're different and we're just trying to increase awareness of, of the different things that students have asked us in our time. And then we also have a specific uh, event for uh, residents. It's called the Bang and Brunch. So it's all about learning how to have great sex. And uh, all the students in res get to come to that. And anyone who comes uh, will get a free McDonald's brunch. So that's very exciting. Um, we have the umbrella project as well. So you will see this little umbrella in different places and it's it's a similar uh, Concept behind it, but it's a different topic. So the umbrella project is all about creating safer space on campus for students to uh, Discuss alcohol and other drugs and how they impact students lives um, And we want to help uh, reduce any problematic effects that, that students may have uh, or may experience from using alcohol or other drugs um, similarly, we do lots of training and workshops, education and awareness, um, and we also are able to have on-site counseling for folks um, if they need anything as well. Same with the Project Lighthouse. So what we do um, for the Umbrella Project is all about uh, creating a whole uh, campus-wide initiative, um, and that is to reduce um, harm and risk uh, associated with students who use uh, alcohol and other drugs, as well as uh, create awareness for um, students who are using and, and how we can support them. Um, we do lots of different um, digital strategies. So same like um, the on-campus or the social media campaigns and stuff that that we talked about before, we do the same thing for uh, Umbrella Project. And this is to try and support uh, any students who are transitioning to post-secondary uh, campus and, and make sure that everyone knows um, the safest ways in, that, in which they can use alcohol and other drugs. So we've got some cool um, online resources for people to check out. This is Rainy Days, it's a, a website. Um, you can find this on our website and it's, it's there's, six different games so three for alcohol three for cannabis or sorry two for alcohol two for cannabis and two for other drugs and um you can kind of play them and there's like different ones there's one uh, for cannabis called blocky stack and you stack um the the different ways that you can consume cannabis from least to most harmful um there's like a texty text one about people going out drinking and so you kind of um do your, you like swipe what your reply would be. And so then like different prompts come up and it's it's to kind of educate people about um, having a good night out, but it's all, they're also kind of fun. The blocky sack one, we have a, a real life version of it too. And hopefully we'll be able to get back to playing that. But the one on the computer is like quite challenging. So people try and race their times on it. So it can be pretty fun. Um, and then we've got some great tools uh, online as well. Uh, the eChug and eToke are really good. Um, web-based tools that, that people can use to see how much they are uh, using alcohol or cannabis um, versus students their age. So um, it's a really great guide to see like, are you using more than your friends or the same amount or, you know, is some of the ways that you're using um, safe or are there other safe tools? So we've got that on there. People can do that uh, free of charge if they want to check that out. And then we've also got some great trainings. So um, we are running some naloxone trainings as well, but there is one on our website and it's all about um, opioid use. So um, naloxone is, is, a, um, is a medication that folks can use to reverse um, the negative impacts of an opioid overdose. And so basically what it does is it, um, it stops an overdose from happening, but you still have to call 911 um, because it's only temporary. So um, we have a full training on that online, as well as we are running uh, trainings throughout AC Day 1 to ensure that um, students are able to access uh, the training as well as uh, our pharmacist Mark uh, from naloxonecare.com will be able to send people home naloxone kits to their house. So we just want to make sure that everyone has a kit and is able to, to use that. 
Um, so we again do the Ask an Expert series uh, covering substance use as well. We've got the naloxone training and we've got the same arts and crafts packages. Um, so check out our events. You'll be able to find them on the Hub website for in the Hub calendar and you'll see what's happening. Um, there's different weeks we have uh, throughout the year that are all focusing on different things. So um, we hope to see you at some of our events. So that's all I have. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email projectlighthouse at algonquincollege.com. Thank you, Sarah. Now I'll be presenting on the AC Hub. As mentioned earlier, my name is Michelle Heavey and I've worked at the college for five years. I first worked in corporate public relations and now I work directly with you, our students, planning orientation and social events with the AC Hub. I'm a graduate of Algonquin College's event management program and business entrepreneurship program. So if anyone watching this has any questions about either of those two programs or anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I would be happy to help you or I, would, I can assist you with um, finding an answer that you need to know. I can point you in the right direction. So now I'm pleased to share some ways that you can get involved and stay engaged and connected while studying remotely or on campus with the AC Hub. So the AC Hub is a department that works hard to bring people together. We collaborate with you, our students, and other departments to create engaging events that are meant to inspire, create connections, and a community. So first we have um, the Student Navigator Program. So the AC Hub launched this. Um, the point is to um, offer you a mentor or a buddy. So if you have any questions um, about the college, like navigating um, your way around the college, or if you have a question about a resource or a service, you will be assigned with a buddy who can assist you. And you can sign up for this on the um, algonquincollege.com slash orientation website when you're registering for the College Essentials Q&A webinar. And if you have any questions at all, your buddy will be able to assist you. Um, the program was built to ensure that you can spend less time trying to figure out Algonquin College and more time learning and engaging with the college community. So another great way that you can get involved is with our events. So we host free events all the time for Algonquin College students and it's throughout the school year. So we've had, uh, we've hosted a lot of virtual events and in the fall we'll continue to host virtual events. So some examples of these are, um, we've had a sourdough workshop, there was a survivor from the Humboldt bus crash who did a, a talk with us, a house plant workshop, some cooking demos, fitness classes, and so much more. The purpose of these events are so that you can learn something new and you can be part of the community, come together, connect and collaborate. Here's a few more samples of our events. So now how do you learn about these events or what's going on with the AC Hub? Please follow us on social media. You can take out your phones right now and search us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter at Algonquin SS. And you'll stay in the loop on all of our upcoming events, resources and services, supports available to you. So I just wanna end it off to say, thank you so much for choosing Algonquin College. One of the best decisions I made um, was to study at Algonquin. Um, I'm so excited for you to start your journey with the college. I know the semester will look super different, but we're all here to support you. We have a lot of fun virtual workshops coming up in the fall. Um, so stay tuned on our social media, please get involved and be a part of the AC Hub experience. Next up, we have Alexandra from Algonquin College of Students Association. Hello, I'm Alexandra Lainville, and I'm a fitness and wellness coordinator at the Fitness Zone. I am an alumni. I graduated from the Fitness and Health Promotion Program and have worked at the college as a part-time student in a variety of different areas and now as a full-time employee for over eight years. Um, I'm very lucky to have the, had the opportunity to learn from teachers, staff, coworkers, and students within our community. Um, I wanted to go over just a few things that we're doing uh, over the past few months during quarantine, uh, just to kind of help out our community any way that we can. Um, so we are offering a variety of workouts and fitness routines. 
Um, we have Instagram fitness workouts, which include no equipment, um, sometimes equipment-based routines. Uh, a lot of the time, cardio is incorporated. And we also go over things like stretching and mobility. Uh, we also have incorporated uh, nutrition tips uh, weekly, so you can definitely check out those. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Uh, we're always here to help. And we will be doing a few live Zoom workouts as well so that you can join in on these lives and kind of uh, see us face to, face to face and ask us any questions that you have. Um, so all of these workouts are found on our social media page, um, which you can see here. And you can also um, find most of the uh, posts that we do on Mondays and Wednesdays for fitness. Um, and the other things that we also offer at the SA, I um, just want to ensure to highlight those. Um, we do have a health and dental plan as well, uh, which is for full-time uh, students. And we also have a housing link so that you can also go ahead and uh, check out different housing options uh, here in Ottawa. Or if you want to post a listing yourself, you can do that as well as a student. Uh, we do still have the Wellness and Equity Center. Um, they are still very active. They do uh, weekly events um, and they meet with each other on Zoom. And um, during the school year, we usually have some Fit Tip Tuesdays. Um, so it's all very exciting. Um, so I wanted to give you guys just one tip. Um, so I just want to ensure that you get out at least one time a day, especially because most of us are stuck in front of a camera all day. Um, if you're concerned about, you know, contact with others, try first thing in the morning or later in the evening and try the less traveled streets. If you are high risk or you're living with those who are high risk, then try opening the window and blasting some fresh air with a fan. It's just really important to get some fresh air throughout the day. and. Um, if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to me by email. Um, if you go to the AlgonquinSA.com website, all of our staff uh, is listed there and all of our contact information is available for you as well. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Those are great tips. And I just want to say thank you so much to all the students who tuned in to the health and wellness webinar. We can't wait for you to start your journey. Mm -hmm.